Hi guys, welcome back to the Syntax UK YouTube channel. My name is Matt and this is part two of our video series on how to use your RME interface with Skype and Zoom. Now, if you haven't had a chance to watch part one of the series, please do go back and check it out. And as always, make sure that you like and subscribe to our channel. Now today we're going to be focusing on how you can get audio from multiple sources into Skype and Zoom. What I mean by multiple sources is everything from all your microphone and line inputs on your interface, as well as audio for maybe a YouTube video, a media player like Spotify, or even something as simple as getting a project out of your interface into Skype and Zoom from your DAW. Being able to play music and audio from different sources is really useful if you're a songwriter, a producer, or a composer looking to share ideas online directly from your DAW or another audio source. It's also really handy if you're a music teacher as it allows you to play your backing track as well as being able to talk through some of the elements of your lesson with a student. If you want a closer look at how Total Mix Effects is set up, it's definitely worth going back to our previous video if you're unsure how to get your RME interface working with Skype and Zoom. So let's get into using multiple sources. I've got some audio coming through Spotify here on software playback channel AM1 and 2, and I want this to be heard by the other people on a Zoom or Skype call. The simplest way to achieve this is by using Total Mix Effects loopback feature. As you might know from part one, loopback allows all the audio from any particular output to be sent back to its corresponding input. So we'll start by routing the audio from software playback AM1 and 2 into output AM1 and 2, which can be done by clicking it in the bottom row then simply raising the level. Next, click the spanner on the output channel and select loopback. So now any audio I route to this output will be sent back to the AM1 and 2 input and will be picked up by Skype and Zoom. This includes all my microphones and any instruments I've connected to my interface. Guitars, keyboards, etc. All of those sources can now be shared directly into Zoom or Skype. Again, it's worth noting that although the signal from the output is being routed back into the input, the metering will not change on the input side. Now this is because the metering is occupied by the physical inputs on the audio interface, so you won't actually see any change in the metering. And now to test, you just open Zoom, and we can see now the signal from Spotify playing on the microphone input level here. So now your recipient will hear whatever audio is coming from your machine. Now if you want to get audio from your DAW into Zoom or Skype, this is even simpler. Now when you're using your DAW, you can easily change which software playback channel the audio from your DAW appears on in Total Mix, simply by changing the output of your master channel in your project. And this gives your DAW its own dedicated fader. For other apps like your web browser or Spotify, it's not that simple as they lack the ability to output more than two channels of audio and will always use the first two channels on any audio interface or sound card by default. Now, you'll therefore find that any other apps you have running will all share software playback channel AM1 and 2 as their output. If you're looking for further control over your internal audio sources, there are third-party apps that make it possible to route each of these sources to their own dedicated software playback channels in Total Mix. Now, we've been trying this out with a program called Loopback by a company called Rogue Amoeba. And this allows you to choose which software playback channel you'd like each individual app to use in Total Mix Effects. So for instance, you can have your web browser, iTunes and DAW all on separate playback channels, giving you dedicated level controls for each software application. Now, there are plenty of other third party apps that do exactly the same job. It's well worth having a look online to see if you can find one that fits your particular needs. That's it for part two of this mini series on how to use your RME interface with Skype and Zoom. In the next part, I'll be looking at ways that you can improve audio quality using your RME interface over the internet. As I said at the beginning of this video, please do make sure that you like and subscribe to our channel so that you get that next part first. If you've got any questions or any suggestions for videos that we can be doing in the future, please do pop them in the comment section below and we'll make sure that we get back to you. Thanks very much, guys. We'll see you again next time.